and greetings friends. Today I want to talk to you about Isaiah, the 45th chapter, verse 7, that says this, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the eternal, do all these things. Now many people take this to mean that Almighty God is the author of all the evils that we see in the world today, of wars, killings, cheating, stealing, you name it. God is the author of it all. God created evil. And many people even take this scripture to mean that there is no Satan the devil. That it is God who's the author of evil, not Satan the devil. And maybe I even got a phone call once where this person was telling me that there is no Satan the devil. Satan the devil is a myth created by the first century church mainly. He is a myth and just created out of whole cloth and that God is the author of all the moral evils in this world today. Well, is that true? Is God the author of evil or is it Satan the devil? What does your Bible say? Well, let's go through some of these scriptures. Now, if the Bible is the word of God, then it shouldn't contradict. The Bible plainly says that God himself is, God himself cannot look on evil, and you can look, read that in Habakkuk 1.13, and that there are many scriptures that inform us that God is not evil, 1 John 1.5 is one example, and that God can't even be tempted by evil. You can read that in James, the first chapter, verse 13. It also says that it's impossible for God to sin. That's in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verse 18. Well, how can that be? If God says he creates evil, yet it's impossible for God to sin. Is there a contradiction? Well, actually, there is no contradiction. When you understand what it means when God says, I create evil, it says, I make peace, peace in the land, free from war, free from disease, free from everything. And then he says, I create evil. That's the context. What does he mean? Well, let's look at some of these scriptures. God continually told Israel, because of their wickedness, he will send evil among them. Uh, in Exodus, the 32nd chapter, verses 10 through 9 through 10 and 14, God says this. He says, now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them, and I make thee a great nation. God was going to consume Israel, destroy it, and make a great nation out of Moses. And then it says, And the Eternal repented of the evil which he thought to do unto this people. There it is. God says he would repent of this evil that he was going to do to Israel, of consuming them all. Jeremiah 18, 8, God says, If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. So when Almighty God says he will bring evil upon this people, it is not a moral evil that God created of what you see in the world of the killings, murders, terrorism, abortion, homosexuality, human smuggling, bestiality, witchcraft, Satanism, I can go on and on. No, it's not these moral evils which man has done. God doesn't create this. Man did it. And, of course, he's also influenced by Satan, the devil, as we shall see. If you notice these scriptures above, it is called evil for a reason. God brings evils on a people, the evils that they have committed, when God judges them, as it plainly says in Ezekiel, the seventh chapter, verse 8 through 9. It says this. God says, I will judge thee according to thy ways, and I will recompense thee for all thine abomination. And mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to your ways, God says, and your abominations that are in the midst of you. And you shall know that I am the eternal that smiteth. God uses, because God sees that Israel wants evil, that's why they commit all these evils, so God uses their evils that they have committed against them. And, and so God gives them the evil that they crave. And of course, there are consequences to sin that lead to death, destruction, disease, and sickness. And God, is, God gives Israel and the world, basically, what they want. He's given them what they want. As he says, I will judge you according to your ways and your abominations. He's giving them exactly what they want. When God does create evil 
against nations. He is devising a device of punishment framed after their evil ways, after their evil ways, and uses it against them as an instrument of punishment. And that's why it's called evil. God takes their evil, turns it around, and uses it against them. And that's why it's called evil. Here's a scripture in Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, again, verse 11. He says, Now, therefore, go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Eternal, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now, everyone, from his evil way. That's his moral evil and make your ways and your doings good. So God says, I will devise a evil against you. Turn from your evil way because he's going to devise that the evil that they are committing, devise an evil and then use it against them. And that's why God says that uh, it's evil. That's why God calls it evil because he's using their evil against them. And if you look at the uh, Hebrew word, which is ra, and this is in my Schofield Bible, a footnote down at the bottom. It says here, translated sorrow, wretchedness, adversity, afflictions, calamities, but never translated sin. God created evil only in the sense that he made sorrow, wretchedness, and so on to be the sure fruits of sin. So this is why it's called evil. God takes that evil that man is creating, man is doing, takes it, and then uses it against him. But is there a Satan the devil? Well, God, Bible plainly says that there is a Satan the devil, and he is the author of evil. If you look at the Bible, you see in the Garden of Eden that Satan the devil influenced our first parents and tempted them to sin. Satan influenced David to number Israel in 1 Chronicles 21.1. And we see Satan the devil standing in front of the throne of God in the book of Job, saying that he's going to get Job to curse God to his face. And it says in Job 1.7 that he goes to and fro in the earth, walking up and down upon it. And it's as it says in uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter, verse 9, that Satan the devil deceives the whole world. And that's why he's walking up and down upon the earth. He's going around deceiving the entire world. Satan tried to tempt Christ in Matthew, the fourth chapter, and of course he didn't get away with it. Notice what Jesus himself said about Satan, the devil. He says, you are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is the liar and the father of it. And that's in John the 8th chapter, verse 44. So he is the father of all lies. He was the murderer from the beginning. He is the author of evil. And when you read Isaiah, the 14th chapter, and Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, you see the history of Satan the devil, how pride was in his heart, conceived in his heart, and he turned against God and began to sin. And he started influencing all the angels underneath him, influencing them. And of course, eventually they, he became Satan the devil and the angels that followed him became demons. He is the author of evil. It says that the devil sins from the beginning. First John, the uh, third chapter, verse eight. So, and, and Jesus Christ calls him, Satan the devil, the ruler of this world. In the Greek, it says prince, but in the Greek, it says it should read ruler, and that's in John 12, 31, 14, 30, and 16, 11 in the Gospel of John. He is called the ruler of this world. 2 Corinthians 4, chapter, verse 4, says that Satan the devil is the god of this evil, wicked world. He is the author of evil. He is the one that has formed this world into what it is today. And I'm not talking about him being a creator or anything like that. I'm talking about this system that we see in place right now in this world. It's governments, it's economies, it's militaries. What we see in this world is influenced by Satan, the devil. And we read in Revelation, the 13th chapter, that the beast power it says that Satan the devil gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. 
and that in the temptation of Christ, Satan the devil showed uh, Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, and he had the ability to give it to Christ right then and there. And Jesus didn't refute that claim. He is the God of this evil, wretched world, and he deceives the whole world, and he influences the whole world. He's also called the Prince of the Power of the Air. In Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 2, and this is how he influences people, by suggestions, by temptations, by uh, wicked thoughts, and people either reject it or they act on those evil thoughts. And uh, so Satan the devil surely is the God of this world. And that almighty God doesn't create, he doesn't create any moral evils. He takes those evils that man is committing and then uses it against him when he punishes them for their evil. God says, I will judge you according to your ways and your abominations. And this is why it is called evil. But when you look at the, again, the word translated raw for evil, many uh, modern translations actually translate it calamities. Like uh, the ESV version that says, I form light, create darkness, I make well-being, and create calamity. The uh, Holman Bible says the same thing. He says, I create disaster. I make success and create disaster. It says in uh, NS, NASB Bible, it says, causing well-being and creating calamity. And you've got to look at the context. The Message Bible, I make harmonies and create discords. And in the NASB Bible, again, it says, I am fashioning calamity against you and devising a plan against you. And that's uh, translating Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, verse 11. It says evil, but it should read calamity. So it's not necessarily evil. It could also mean calamity, distress. And you got to, of course, look at the context for that. So to say that this scripture proves that Almighty God creates evils in this world today is just another Bible misconception.